Hi, I'm Mark Ford, and I'm at home, and you're at home because of the coronavirus pandemic. We're at home because we're keeping everybody safe. That's what we need to do. But if you're at home and there's no marimba there, what can you do to be able to help your technique and at least get you, keep your hands moving, keep your technique working? So I'm gonna show you some exercises uh, to play on the floor, okay? Super easy to put your back up against a couch like this or something that's uh, comfortable and then to work on your technique. So the first thing we wanna assume is that the floor is the natural bars of the marimba. That's the level of the natural bars. Okay, so before we get started, we have to choose our playing height. Now I'm gonna choose my playing height here with my left hand. Notice that it's hanging naturally from my shoulder. I don't have any elbows out or anything weird. And I'm gonna choose the height. Okay, here we go, ready, go. Notice that I did it with the wrist here. Okay, notice that I didn't use my arm to choose the playing height. I want my hand to stay low to the keyboard so that I'm just gonna break the wrist here. Now that's gonna be my playing level for these exercises. Now I can put that level wherever I want, higher or lower, okay? But for this exercise, this purpose, it's probably fine here. Now, as these mallets drop to the floor, they're gonna come back to that imaginary line, okay? So I, because I wanna be able to control the balance and the blend on the instrument, so therefore I have to be able to control how fast and how high these mallets are gonna rebound or seem to rebound. Okay, so if you work through my book, uh, Marimba Technique Through Music, you'll know that um, in the opening of the book, there's a section about floor exercises, and I give you some very basic um, permutations uh, for double lateral exercises on page seven. Okay, so if you've done those, those kind of look like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, that's the beginning one, or it could go a little quicker. But the idea is that we're gonna come back to this imaginary line across both hands. So I really wanna keep my focus and my ideas on what's, where my mallets are returning to, not so much about what's happening up here. I wanna keep that line steady and secure, okay? Now, the exercises that I wanna show you are great exercises for dealing with the development of one-handed rolls. Okay, the one I like the, the most in terms of the double lateral permutations is the permutation that goes one, two, three, four, and then two, one, four, three. Okay, so it's all to the right and then all to the left. Now the reason this is a good uh, work for the one-handed roll is because it makes the wrist turn both ways back and forth. It's not just one motion all the time. We're having to go backwards and forwards. So in this case, my left hand is going one, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one. One, two, three, four, two, one, four, three. Now, a little quicker than that, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, and of course, a little quicker. Now, what you wanna be able to do is you use your metronome, okay? And we're gonna take the metronome, I'm gonna put it to a, a pretty reasonable tempo. Okay, this is like, you know, 70, 78, this one's 78. Now, and go, and one. So you can see that mostly my mallets are coming back to that same level. Double time. Now I can start with either hand. I'm starting with number one right now because it just is easier to tell you that way. One, two, three, four, two, one, four, three. All to the right, all to the left. So the second exercise that we're gonna use to help develop our one-handed rolls is uh, a little bit more extensive and a little bit different from that first permutation I just showed you. I, I remember the first time someone introduced a one-handed roll to me. It was Rich Holly. Rich Holly was a graduate student at East Carolina University at the time, and I was a freshman. And he showed me a one-handed roll and asked me to try it. And when I did, all I could do was nervously and tensely rotate the mallets back and forth. And I was doing this, and he, he said things like, oh, great, make it go slower. Make it go faster. Make it go louder, make it go softer. Of course, I couldn't do any of these things because I really just was just a nervous, 
uh, Twitch more than a controlled delivery of these notes. So what I'm going to show you now in combination with that earlier exercise is something that can really help you start to build the control and the flexibility and the relaxation that you need to play a one-handed role smoothly. Okay, so this exercise is going to be based on an ostinato of eighth notes. I'm going to start off with just the left hand playing the eighth notes. The right hand is going to play the variations. The right hand will play the eighth notes with the left, left hand, then play a triplet against the left hand, then four sixteenth notes against the left hand, then a fivelet over the left hand, and you get the idea. Then the sixth tuplet, and then the seven, uh, seven tuplet, and then 32nd notes or eight. So we're just gradually increasing one number uh, against the ostinato each, on each beat. Let me show you how it goes. <clears throat> we're going to choose uh, the metronome. We're going to put it on 52. I know it seems kind of slow, but this exercise really just doesn't go much faster. Uh, it can go up to maybe 55 max or so, but, but really you may be starting at 40 or even slower. You may want to subdivide that on your metronome uh, to just make it a little easier. But this is going to start off like this way with the left hand. So both hands together, the triplet, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, Okay, now, it is important as you play that ostinato that the ostinato be slightly louder than the variation hand. Why? Because you want to focus on time. You want to focus on the variation hand being controlled inside of the time and being able to change those subdivisions smoothly and evenly. Okay, so now let's do it on the left hand where the right hand becomes the ostinato and the left hand plays it. Now you could start, uh, you could start in the outside mallets first with this exercise or the inside or some combination. Really doesn't matter. In fact, it's probably good to do it a lot of different ways. But I'll stay consistent for right now. So here's the right hand with the ostinato. Twos. Threes. Fours. Fives, sixes, sevens, eights, okay, it's probably good not to talk while you do this, but you get the idea as you build up this um, ability to play these at a variety of tempos and dynamics, you start to have more control of like how many notes you put inside the beat. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, that doesn't sound like a roll. No, what I'm playing is not a roll, but it's allowing my hand to be able to subdivide evenly against the ostinato. And in doing so, I'll be able to control not just the balance and blend, but the speed of the roll, of course. Because roll speeds are not consistent. Depending on the instrument that you're playing, the room that you're in, the mallet that you're choosing, and also, of course, the music that you've selected, the roll speed is, could change on, on all these factors. The whole idea is to sustain the note, to sustain the ring of the bar or the bars, uh, depending on what you're playing. So that's going to change how fast you are going to play that role and also what kind of touch uh, you might bring to that musical phrase. Okay, now that we've been through these two exercises, you have some good material to work on. These exercises will help build your confidence and your control and your touch, even though there's no marimba around. You can work on this on the floor, be relaxed, be smooth, be fluid, but be precise when it comes to timing and use your metronome a lot. Okay, even though there's no marimba, you can make progress. Work on these and when, by the time you get back to the instrument, you'll be better for it. 
All right, I want to thank Tama and Bergerot and Innovative Percussion for helping with this video and to help promote it. It's an honor for me to be able to be associated with all those amazing companies. Okay, now, what do you do? You practice, okay? Also, you're, be careful, be safe, practice social distancing, wash your hands, take care.